I'm going to do a video showing how I create faces using Karen Dosh Neo Color 2 crayons. I want to start by giving credit where credit is due. Um, I learned a lot of my face techniques from watching both uh, Jane Davenport and Tamara Lepore videos. So uh, a lot of my techniques came from what they teach. I have um, checked out from the library their books and studied it and making faces does take a lot of practice. So don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Try and try and try and eventually all of a sudden you just kind of find your niche for your style of making a face. But keep at it and um, the more you do it the better you get at it and the more fun it becomes. And now I love doing different faces. This is one of my favorite books to use for making faces and it is the uh, Strathmore Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper. It is this direction and it's long and for this particular book I'm turning it this way lengthwise and doing it the long ways. Um, you can do anything you want in your art journals, but be creative and try different things with turning your paper or doing it at a different angle than just the regular straight on angle and you'll have a lot of fun with that. Making faces is really fun. They're unique. Every face is different. So when you start out and you start to draw a face, you really never know what it's going to turn out like. As you create it, it kind of comes to life and takes on its own shape. Faces can be done in uh, put in different things like this. I did uh, lift your face towards the sun and I made faces in the center of sunflowers. So and they've got just lots of personality and character. So when you're practicing, make some circles, do some fun things, turn them into flowers. If you don't want to do the rest of the girl or you're having trouble with doing hair, um, or making a body, then play around with it and make faces and turn them into flowers just until you get the hang of doing faces. The first recommendation is to find some good watercolor paper that you like the texture of. It doesn't have to be expensive, but watercolor paper is what you'll need for using a Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 water soluble crayon. So make sure you get some watercolor paper and I like to make sure that it's got a really good thickness to it. 90, um, 90 is probably for me a little bit too thin but it does work. So if you find a, a drawing pad make sure that it's 90 to 140. For today's demonstration I'm going to use Strathmore watercolor. It's 140 pound paper and the reason I switched from my other Strathmore book was just because I'm playing around and I'm going to do a bunch of different things on here. I don't want to do it in my book that I do finished pieces in. So let's go ahead and get started. There are many 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 videos out on YouTube on how to draw a face. My suggestion is watch as many different people as possible. Everybody has a different approach, a different take on it. It's all going to start from the same basic ideas. Um, but then once you play around, you might find this person's idea resonates with you more than this person. So uh, just watch a lot of people's videos. It's, it's, not a, it's not a competition. It's we're all here to learn from each other, share our ideas, and make us all become the best artists we possibly can. So after you've watched a lot of different videos on drawing faces, I'm not going to show that here, um, but if, if you would like to see my process of drawing faces, um, ask me in the, in the um, questions below, in the comments below, leave me a comment that you'd like to see my process, and I'd be glad to do a video on how to draw faces. My my technique is a combination of uh, many other people's techniques and my own thrown in. So, uh, because everybody pretty much kind of finds their own way of drawing a face. This video is more on how to color them with uh, Caran d'Ache Neo Colors. So, uh, I've gone ahead and sketched out a face. And now I'm going to show you how to use Caran d'Ache Neo Color crayons to bring it to life. I start with a Tombow Mono drawing pen in a 01 and what I do with that is I start to add in the highlights. Let me zoom in here. I'm getting some shadows across my page too. Let me um, show you what I do. I go in and 
start adding in and defining the face with a pen. So after I've got it sketched out, I start doing a little bit and I basically do the mouth, like the um, inner part of the mouth where the lips come together, I do that in pen. I do the underneath of the nose and then I define the eyes. Doing the top upper lid. And lightly going around the iris. And I start laying that out a little bit in pen. Doesn't have to be completely defined or perfect, but it just gives some guidelines for where I'm going to put color. Do the eyelids here. And that's what I do is just basically get that get those initial shapes started. It's also good to do the edge of your face, the outline border, because that's something that won't change. The shape won't change. You're just adding color. So go ahead and draw that in, maybe even the neck. Okay, could do the ears. And these are going to be defined more later on. I do go back over it with um, a paint pen, a Posca paint pen, and make those lines even darker and more defined. But just to get down some basics, let's do a hairline. Okay, and I'm not worried about the eyebrows. So there's basically what I outline in, in pen to get started. I'll put a list in the description box below. There's a little black arrow where there's details about my video and where you can uh, find me on Facebook and Instagram and all those other places. I'll put a description there of the numbers and colors that I'm using here. And I'll just put that list. Here are the crayons that are um, in their original state and then I also have a video on how to put them into pans and I've done that here. So these are Caran d'Ache Neo Colors in Flush, Apricot, Salmon, Sierra Yellow, Salmon Pink, and uh, Golden Ochre. And they are um, now in pans. For me it's easier from pans. That, but it doesn't matter. Either way, it's the same because what you're going to do with your water brush is you're going to either tip it off the bra off the crayon and start to color with it like this. Or you're going to use them out of your pans. And it's pretty much the same as tipping off of a crayon. So either way works and it's up to you how you want to use your product. Okay, I had to switch water brushes because that was a flat head and I want one with a point. Um, I use a fine to medium point water brush for doing my faces and it's personal preference. There's really no right or wrong. So I'm going to do some of it tipping it from the crayon and then some of it from the pan so you can see both. And I do start with flesh color. And so I take some of the flesh color. I don't color directly onto my paper. I like to put it onto my brush from the product itself and then add it. To me, it looks better. It's more of a painterly look. That's just my personal preference. I start with a flesh and I do a basic layer of flesh tone. Just getting some color laid down all over the face. And this is my process. Doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Everybody can go about this in their own way, but this is how I do faces, how it works for me. So I lay down my base flesh tones, my flesh tone base, just to get some 
color to the face. And it doesn't matter if you go over your pencil lines. Yes, they do spread out a little bit, but it just adds some texture and shading to it. I don't mind that at all. Okay, so I've laid down my basic color. That's a little darker up there because I had color on my brush when I started. And this is the same color, only in a pan. I'm going back to flesh again. Now what I do is I just start building it up. And what you want to decide, you need to decide where the face is going to be in sun and shade. So you have to imagine your sunlight coming from one direction or the other. Like say the sun is shining this way, there's going to be shadows on this half of her face because this face is getting hit by the sun and this face is in shadow. So I'm going to do this one that way with my light source coming from the left hand side. So where there's going to be shadow on the face, you obviously want to go darker. So I go right along that edge there and I just start shadowing out the side of where that nose would be, a little bit underneath her nose, under that eye, because that face is going to be darker and in shadow. And I do kind of avoid the cheek area because that's going to be, um, it's, it's higher than the rest, so you, I don't want to color that in. Or you're going to end up with a flat looking face. And see how, even right now, just with this shadow in and leaving that cheek section alone, how she's starting to take some dimension. It doesn't look flat. That's what you're going for. You want to put color in, in places where her face would kind of, go in. It goes in right here underneath that jawline. So I'm going to add a little bit of color there. Over here, even though this is in the sun, you still want to add a little bit of color there. Same thing so that it, it appears that the jawline is going in. Put a little bit of color there as a dimple color underneath the lip. You want to add a little bit of color underneath that lip because then that makes that look dimensional. Sun's this way, so there's going to be shadow right here under that neck. So go ahead and add some shadow in there. See how it's just that quick in this little bit of work, it's already starting to take some shape. And then she's going to have extra shadow in that crease just above her eye crease. And this is all just done in the one color of flesh tone. Add that shadow in under there. I'm going to pick up a little apricot and put that in the little corner of her eye because it's a little pinker. Let's put it in the other corner too. And look how it's already coming to life. Very easy. And these Neo Color 2 crayons make it so much fun. Crayons are rolling around like hot potatoes, so I went and got a little cup to put them in so they wouldn't be trying to escape me. Anyway, so you just keep adding color to it and making it darker in spots where you want it to be darker. If you walk away from it for a second and let it dry just a little bit, then you can add more on top and it'll keep getting darker values. These Neo Colors are so forgiving and so easy to work with. I just love them. And then you're still going to want a little bit of extra color on this side underneath where the hair is tucked. Because if you don't, it makes it look flat and the hair is going to create a shadow over the face. So you put a little bit along that edge. And then a little touch of shadow because she's still got an eyelid crease here. So you want to add a little bit there. I'm just on my side where the sun is shining, I just do a lot less because obviously it's going to be brighter. And very watered down, I add the shadows to create the bridge of the nose. See how that is? It's, it's got color, but it's watered down, so it's going to make her nose look like it's off of her face and not flat. The other nice thing about these, when they dry and you add water back onto them, you can still continue to blend them. So if you get a streak, like, like say up here, if that's too streaked for you, see how that's kind of like one line, you can still blend it out. 
That's why I love Neo Colors. They are just so cool and so fun to work with. Look at how just water on my brush, no color. I could go back in there and blend that out a little bit and make it not so stark of a line. So pretty fun, pretty easy. You do want to do a little shade under this, this nostril too, even though the sun's on it, it still is higher than the rest of the face. You want shadow underneath her nose, so get a little bit of extra on your brush to do the shadow underneath her nose, because the nose is higher or farther out on the face, and so it casts a little bit of a shadow. And then that little place where it bows down to the lips. And then I like to take the flesh color and start the lip color. Even though I'm going to make them more pink, I still like to add some flesh tone to it because then it makes them a little more realistic. And this could have a tiny touch of shadow down this side of the neck too, but just a little bit. Just for, for shadow effect. She does have that spot in her neck that is like a divot. I always add a little bit of shadow there. And she's starting to starting to take shape here. So wherever it recesses, the eye recesses back in is where you're going to put a shadow. And then now I can add some, take some salmon pink. I'm going to add some pink to her cheeks. If it's too much color, dab your brush off on the on a piece of paper, on a paper towel, and just add more water and come back in and blend a little bit to blend it out. You can also use your finger. I love using the, a touch of my finger. Just be sure it doesn't have any pencil on it or you'll get a smudge. But just add some water and give her some cheek color. Keeping in mind that that upper cheekbone is going to be highlighted. And you can go back in later, which I do, with um, a white Posca paint pen. And I add highlights to the top of those cheeks as well. So we're just building up some color. Put it on, dab it in, build it up. Let it dry. Come back and play a little bit more. And I just am kind of doing it in a painterly way. Where it needs more color, add more color. If it starts to fade, because sometimes when it dries, it is a little bit like watercolor in the sense that while it's wet and you're putting it on, it looks really nice and vibrant. And then when it starts to dry, it does tend to get a slight bit lighter. So if you want it darker again, go back and add some more. It doesn't matter if it's dried. You can still blend it out again. Now for her lips, I'm going to go in with my pink. Add my pink. And I'm kind of doing this rushed because of the sake of the length of the video. You can take your time. You can really define it. I do the upper lip darker. I take all the color off of my brush and then I kind of just pull a little bit of color down into that bottom lip like that. So the upper lip is a little bit brighter. If you color the whole lip in with the same color of pink, it's not going to look as plump and defined. And then right underneath that little pouty place where the lips come together, I add a little more color in there. Like that. And she's starting to look kind of cute. Do those upper eyelids. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with uh, color and do... I'm going to make her eyes blue. And I'm using three colors. Um, mainly because eyes are not one flat color. The iris of our eyes have many, many, many flecks of color within them. And if you do them all in one solid color, it's it just doesn't come out as nice. It doesn't reflect as well or, or look as nice as when you use several colors or several shades. So I'm going to use a light cobalt blue, a turquoise green, and blue jeans for the basic color of her eyes.
So how I do that, I start with the lightest color first and I pick up color and I add it to her eye all over and I know there's no pupil in the middle but we'll get there. I like to add my color in and get it started and I like to use the lightest color first so put that in and then I let it dry. Now for my second color I'm going to take that turquoise and this is more of a highlight color to me so I'm just going to throw a little bit of it in here and it's going to be a little bit random like this and it's just to get some contrast color in there. I'm sure you can see already that that, that makes it kind of look realistic instead of just coloring them all one flat color of blue. Now I'm taking the blue jean because that's the color main color I want them to be and I start by going around the outside edge and around the top edge and I add in the basic color that I want that eye to be and here's a good trick if you think the eyes don't look even uh, don't look you haven't drawn the irises the same size or you're not just not quite sure if you have an iPhone or an iPad or a tablet, take a photo of your drawing and then look at it. Because on camera here, I mean, even looking at this, this iris looks a little bit smaller than this. The camera doesn't lie. And so take a photo of your artwork and you can decide, oh, you know what? It looks a little off. The eyes look crooked when I'm drawing it. They don't look quite right. And you can adjust after um, looking at your photo. So that's just something I've discovered. And I discovered it basically by taking pictures of my artwork when it was completed. Thought I had this great drawing and then I looked and went, you know, there's something just not quite right about those eyes. And when I measured them with a ruler, they were off. So it's kind of a good idea to take a photo. So now I'm just kind of playing around, making the outside edge a little bit darker than the inside edge. Till I get it kind of the way I want it to look and I'm gonna let it dry just a bit. okay now I'm gonna take a Posca pan I'm using the 0.7 millimeter bullet shaped Posca pan in black to draw in the pupils of her eye so I'm gonna go in here and just put in a pupil right over my color that I have just created and I'm doing it three quarters so it's sort of underneath her eyelid, right in the middle. You can do it with pencil first if you want to. If it makes you feel better. I'm not worried about it because you can always fix it and adjust it. Make it a little bit bigger if you have to change it out. Okay, and this one's a little bit lower. It needs to be a little lower. There we go. Mm, it's still too small. Okay, and then before I go in and keep working on those eyes, I want to let that dry. But I am going to go over and underneath the eyelid, I'm going to bring this across and make my line. Kind of doing her eyelid like that. I'm just going on top, not on the bottom. I'm not outlining the whole thing, just the top. Now I like to go back in with my Tombow pen because it's fine line and I'm going to define the shape of that iris. I'm going to go around it in this black pen and define it a little bit more using my Tombow pen. This is just my process. And how I do my faces okay then I also like to take my Tombow pan because it's nice and fine and really light-handed I start to make some flex out from that pupil they're not really defined they're just flex Now I'm going to take a gray color. I'm using steel gray and I'm going to pick up a touch of gray just a little on the end of my brush and I'm going to go right up underneath 
and go over the edge of the white part of the eye. Reason for this is the eyelid creates a casts a shadow down over our eyes. And when you put that little shadow in with some gray, it really makes a difference on your drawing. It makes those eyes seem more round and seem more like they're gonna come to light. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a little darker color of, of um, apricot. Oops, I went a little high there, but that's okay. Along that bottom edge, that's like the inner part of our, the wet part of our eyelids. I'm gonna add that in and I'm going to add a little of it to the top as well. Now I'm going to go back to working on the face a little bit more. I'm going to pick up some more flesh and I want to go right along the edge of the nose and kind of upwards to start to define that nose a little bit. So it's giving that nose a little bit of shape. Like that and making it look a little bit more realistic I add a little more color underneath here underneath this lip it's just too light for me to define it you can just keep tweaking it go back and places that there's shadow underneath those nostrils add a more a little bit more shadow there you really just kind of have to play around with it a little bit more maybe in this eye crease get that a little bit darker a little bit more over here and they'll just start to start to look realistic to you and take more shape and on this forehead i like to leave a circle space of highlight so I shadow on up to that. Now I'm going to put on some hair and I'm not putting a lot of emphasis into that because this is more about doing faces. I'm just using a yellow ochre here which is just to basically get that hair in and on. I forgot to color her ears. So I'm throwing on some hair color. in just kind of a watercolory kind of way. Not thinking too much about it. Don't overthink your artwork. That is probably my biggest tip from my own self experiences. When I started out, I spent so much time trying to perfect it and trying to make everything look perfect and really overthinking it to the point where I was never satisfied. I never liked what I created and it just never looked right because I just, I really overworked my piece. So really simply here, I've just added some hair. Like I said, not overthinking it. I need to go back and add color to her ears. And this ear is going to be the one in shadow. So it is going to be darker. Just add some flesh tone to both of the ears. And this one, you're going to want to come back in and add some deeper color because it's definitely in shadow on the other side of her head. The inner part of the ear is a little darker than the outer. Even under here along that ridge, make it a little darker. Okay. And then once you have hair in, the other thing you can do is add your eyebrows because the hair is going to be about the same color as the eyebrows maybe with some additional colors mixed in but basically you're going to want your eyebrows the same color as the hair their basic color I'm doing this really really fast so Just starting to give her some shape and personality here. I'm going to add just a 
tiny touch of yellow in her eyes. Not yellow like yellow jaundice yellow so that it's they're not so stark white. So this is coming together. You can keep working it and working it. Adding more color here and there where there's shadows and where there's places higher than the other or lower than the other. You want to just keep adding color and working it and blending it out. And this needs a little more color over here because it's in shadow. So in just a short time, I think we've established how easy it is to get this basic face down on the page and you can keep keep going and adding more to it and then once she dries she's not done by any means but this is a very good basic start and to show you some highlighting techniques and things to do and then you're going to want to come back in obviously and make some eye eyelashes Again, I like my Tombow for this. And eyelashes are something that takes practice. You can do them heavy, you can do them all different ways. It's not working on the wet paper. Let's see. I'm going to go in with my Posca pen and do them a little heavier. And don't forget that there's always eyelashes on this side as well, little ones. So add your little eyelashes on the inside as well. You don't have to get carried away with them, but just little idea of them. And then same at the bottom. Add some eyelashes add at the bottom. Add some of the pencil. Um, my pen is not working because the paper is still wet and I just kind of want to show you really quick. But you can go back and do them in pen. Do some very light eyelashes at the bottom. Highlights with a Posca pen. So I like to add a little highlight. Right above her eyelids. I like to add my little dot highlight in her eye, like the twinkle in her eye, maybe even a little line like this, a little bit of highlight on her lips, at the bottom of her lips, to make them look nice and pouty, at the end of her nose, this is something Tamara Lepore does, make your highlight at the bottom of the nose and make it go up the face, put it on your forehead and blend it out. To give her that nice highlighted forehead, you can put some highlight over on her brow bone and pat it out. Even do that over here, a little brow bone highlight. Even right on top of the neo colors. Oops, I went to her eyebrow, but you get the point. It's really nice to add some highlights and touch on the top of her cheeks. And while it's wet, just pat it out and you get some really nice highlight and it blends in with the color. So you get really nice face highlights. So the highlights from the Posca pen. So there you go. That is my basics for doing face color with Neo Color. This, by my standards, isn't done. Um, I would go back in and I would keep adding color, even around the eyes. Um, I think that her eyes could stand to have a little bit more blue in them. 
a little darker around the edges and up at the top like this or maybe even a darker color of blue add another color of blue in here and the more you play the better it gets that's better that looks nice to me so that is my basis for doing faces. Play around, keep laying, layering, keep adding more layers when this dries. Come back in and add some more color to it. Keep adding layers and layers because the greatest thing and why I love my Karen Dosh Neo Color 2 is you can keep adding and adding and adding and adding layers. So if you want to add depth to this, when it's dry and you go back in and you brush over it again with some more color and look what it does it just it lays right on top of what you already put there and you end up with this great amount of color see it just gets better and better the more you add to it so you want to come over here and add some more just keep adding and let it dry in between your layers be sure you do that because that's that's a big part of it is letting it dry in between and if something isn't smooth enough blend it out before you know it she's going to start coming to life and then on these eyebrows i would go back in because they're just one toned i'm not real fan of the one tone i like using three colors at least of different things but go back in with a detail pen when it's dry and don't forget that this side that's in shadow you really want to highlight that darker so I even go in with that with my Posca pen and along this edge make it darker really really make it darker and add some contrast to it then it's not so flat it's more realistic see how she's starting to really take shape but remember make your stuff on this side a lot darker whatever side is away from the light source make it darker because it's in the darkness. The more you work on it, the more it'll take shape. Now go back in here and add a few little strokes of hair in her eyebrows. I'd love to do that. It's got the base color that they are, but then you also have some hair-like strokes, so it's more realistic. And there you are. I hope that gave you some ideas and inspiration on working on faces. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And just practice, practice, practice. That's my biggest my biggest recommendation is practice because the more you do it the better you're going to get at it the more you're going to enjoy it it's going to come natural and you're going to have a good time art soothes the heart so thank you for stopping by and i hope you have a blessed day